Hello friends, and today I want to show you a practical use for one of the features in OpenTunes and Tahoma 2D that I've not yet discussed in detail. And that's how you can create your own vector trail brushes to make drawing repeating patterns quick and easy. And I did that to create the confetti for this image that I used on a recent livestream and in its thumbnail. So I thought I'd share that technique with you today. So let's get straight to it. And I'm using Tahoma 2D today, but you take the same steps if you're using OpenTunes. And first off, vector trails can only be used on vector levels. So let's create a new vector level. And then if I add a new palette entry, I choose the vector tab. And you can see the trails are in this middle section here. And you can hide the top section of generated brushes by pressing generated. And you can hide the bottom set of brushes by clicking the vector brush button. And that just leaves the trails. And you just select the trail to use for this palette entry. So I'll choose the confetti option that I used the other day. And using the brush tool, you can just start painting confetti by drawing a line. Or you can use the geometry tools. And the shapes in that trail follow your line. And you can adjust their size by changing the brush size. But that change only affects the next line that you draw. To change the current line, you use the selection tool, select the line or shape, and then change the thickness using the thickness editor on the options toolbar. And using the brush tool, you can even change the size of the line by adjusting the pressure. So starting off light and then going heavier. And you can change the spacing and rotation by going to the settings tab and adjusting the distance and then the rotation. So how do you create your own? Well, it's pretty simple really, and there's two ways. The first way is to render any scene out of OpenTunes to an image file, but we'll get to that later. And the other way is to create a vector level. So we'll create a vector level in this new scene and try and name it as carefully as you can, but we'll take a look at the naming in a second and you can always rename it before you start using it. And then you simply draw each shape for your trail on a new frame. So for this example, I'll just draw a trail of numbers. Now turn on the onion skin so each drawing is roughly the same size. Then you simply hit save all to save that drawing and close the program. And then find the level file in your project's drawings folder. Just here, called numbers.pli. And because it's a vector file, it'll always end with .pli. Then you open the custom styles folder for your program. And if you're using OpenTunes, you open your OpenTunes stuff folder, then it's inside the library, and then custom styles. And if you're using Tahoma 2D, find where you copied your extracted program folder, then open the Tahoma stuff folder, and then again it's library, custom styles. And as I'm using Tahoma 2D today, I'll use this folder. So in here, you can see the current vector trails, and you just copy your PLI into it. And here's a tip for you. This is the time to consider the name because the name is shown as a tooltip to make it easier to find and the trails are shown in alphabetical order. So to make yours easier to find, start its name with an underscore and it'll appear first. So that's copied here. And if I show you the icons for this folder, if I make it larger, you can see the result of the other way of creating a vector trail. And that's to copy an image sequence that uses the OpenTunes and Tahoma 2D naming format. So just restart your program, and now when you go to the vector tab, you'll see your brush shown first in the list. So here's the numbers trail that we've just created. So choose it for your palette entry, and you can just start painting with it. And these are great for patterns on clothing, for background textures and plenty of other uses, so it's a good trick to have in your arsenal. So that's how you create a vector trail using a vector level. 
but I said earlier that you can also render any image sequence out. So let me show you that. So here I've got the Duranko Dog run animation. So all you need to do is to zoom the camera in to cover the areas that you want for your trail. And then in the output settings, simply change the output type to PNG, choose the frames to render out and give it a good name. And that'll then produce an image sequence in the right format, which you can copy into the custom styles folder. And then when you restart the program, and go to the vector trails, you can see your image sequence listed as a vector trail. So if I select the Dranko dog, I can draw a line with him, or use the geometry tools. And again, by changing the settings, you can adjust how close together each image is and change the rotation of them. So that's how you create and use vector trails. Let me know in the comments what you're using them for. And if you enjoyed this tip and you're new here, then consider subscribing and hitting that bell to get a notification whenever I release a new video. And I'll be back soon with another video, so why not join me then? In the meantime, create your own vector trails and watch it speed up your work. And that's a guarantee.